Alt text is often overlooked, but it is an important part of web design. You add alt text to your HTML code to help describe your images. If for whatever reason your browser doesn't render an image properly, it uses the alt text as a backup. And this is also used by people with visual impairments that use screen readers to view websites. Including alt text on your images is a good idea because it not only makes your website more accessible, but it can help with SEO. Google uses alt text for images to help with their Google image search indexing. So if you're adding alt text to your images, it could definitely help boost your SEO rankings. If you're thinking, I don't understand HTML, so how do I add this to my website? Fear not, it's actually really easy to do, especially if you use WordPress. In WordPress, you'll want to click on your media library and then click on your image. On the right hand side, you have the option to add your alt text there. Enter it in, hit enter, and it will save your changes. Another thing that you can do to check to see if your images have alt text on them is download this extension for Chrome. This is a free extension that allows you to right click on any image and view its properties. Within the properties is alt text, so you can see what the alt text of your image is or if you need to add it in. 404 pages are another thing that often gets overlooked in web design. 404 errors are what happen if somebody lands on a page that isn't found. Maybe that person had a link to an old page that has since been removed, or they found an old link on social media, they clicked on it and it didn't go to a page that existed anymore. Whatever the reason is, 404 errors can definitely happen, so it's a good idea to customize your 404 page. You can include links or a search bar like we've done on our 404 page to help guide users to the place that they were looking for. If you built your website using WordPress, there are several plugins that allow you to customize your 404 page. And if you're using Elementor, you can create a template specifically for your 404 page. And I've actually made a video on how to do this, so you might wanna check that out after you're done watching this video. Something that I see far too often in web design is way too many animations on a website. I'm talking every single thing on the page is animated. Now animations can be really cool if they're done correctly. When you overuse animations, it can really make your site look more on the amateur side versus looking professional. Like remember those cheesy PowerPoint presentations from back in the day? PowerPoint. Animations can really slow down your website load time because they often require additional scripts to be running in the background of your website to get them to work. I see this happening on a lot of websites that look really nice, really trendy, and probably cost a lot of money to make. As a designer, I'm always looking for inspiration. And one of the things that's been frustrating me lately is when I see a really cool website design, but it loads so slowly because there's a ton of scripts in the background trying to get things to animate. Design isn't about just looking pretty or looking cool. It's about user experience. And you can have the most beautiful site in the world, but if it loads really slowly, it's going to frustrate users. Instead of animating every element, animate where things make sense, like on a hover image or on a page transition or a button animation. These things all make sense and can actually make things look really cool and more high end. You can check out my video on how to animate your website using Elementor to get more ideas on how to use animations in your website. Out of all the things that I'm going to talk about in this video, this mistake bugs me the most. If I click on your link or your button and there's no underline, no color change, or no indication that it's an actual link or button, that's a problem. This is a really simple thing that goes a long way with user experience. I see a lot of really talented web designers and not taking the time to indicate their link hovers or their active states, and I don't know why. They'll create these beautiful layouts and high-end looking websites, but they don't take that extra step to indicate whether or not something is a link. I know it's an extra step, but it's an important one, and it's kind of web design, web development 101. We're taught this early on, and taking the time to do this actually gives you an opportunity as a designer to do some cool things, so why not do it? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, hover states help indicate what is a link on your website. Active states help indicate pages that a user's already visited. 
This might be a change in color, an underline, or an overline, but whatever it is, it's important to include these in your website design to help with user experience. Where you go to set this up will depend on what you use to build your website. In WordPress, if you're using a theme, this is likely in your theme customization settings. In Elementor, you can set this up in site settings, which is really nice because you can set this up globally so you don't have to click on every single link and every single button on your pages. You make the adjustments once and then changes will populate throughout your website. Professional photos will always be best and always produce a better looking website, but I get it. I understand that not everybody is a professional photographer or has the budget to hire a photographer to take photos for everywhere on their website. But if you really want to create a killer website and a strong brand, I do think that professional photography is worth investing in. Images will really go such a long way in creating that high-end look that you're wanting. If you are using stock photography on your website, it's important to take your brand into consideration. Think about your brand colors and the overall mood that you're trying to achieve. Don't just pick any old photo. Choose photos that really help reinforce your brand and the message that you're trying to put out into the world. If you're making these design mistakes on your website, you don't need to worry because all of these things can easily be changed. And that's one of the things I love about website design. You can always make tweaks and improvements along the way to make your site better. If you like learning about web design, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We publish new tutorial videos here every week, and we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. We still have a little ways to go, but you can definitely help. Subscribing is free, and it really means nothing to you, but a ton to us, so we'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.